coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Ten communities from across southern Saskatchewan and Alberta are the focus of a new documentary series by the National Film Board of Canada. Saskatchewan continues to lead the way on a number of initiatives. This time is the first Canadian province to take a provincial approach to an open family presence policy in healthcare facilities. The parishioners of the First United Church in Swift Current got a unique introduction to some of our city's newest residents. As the city of Swift Current continues to attract interest in the 80 residential lots now available in the Cypress Point subdivision near the Elmwood Golf Course, a number of upgrades to the area are taking place. Thanks for joining us here today. The town of East End is the focus of a National Film Board documentary. We have more in today's top story. Ten communities from across southern Saskatchewan and Alberta are the focus of a new documentary series by the National Film Board of Canada. The Grasslands Project spotlights the residents of rural areas and their unique stories through a series of short films. David Christensen is an executive producer for the National Film Board and was recently in East End for the premiere and explains how the project was developed. For the last about a year and a half, I was looking at the work that we were doing in my studio and I really felt that we weren't making enough films about rural issues and we weren't making enough films that uh, looked at life in southern Alberta and southern Saskatchewan. So I got together with Scott Parker who is a fantastic filmmaker, he's based out of Edmonton, he has lots of experience not only making films but engaging with communities and he and I started brainstorming about what that work or works could be that we could, you know, tell rural issues and work down here. The town of East End is one of the communities featured in the series focusing on the local fire department in After the Fire. Fire Chief Bob Stork has worked as a volunteer firefighter for 40 years and has seen numerous fires and accidents, many ending on a fatal note. And says these experiences have now taken a toll on him as he deals with post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a tough, tough thing. Everybody's different on it. And there can be one incident that triggers it where you um, go back, maybe back to 10 years, you could go back 20 years, you could go back 30 years. The flashbacks, the bad dreams, the night sweats, all this stuff. And like I said, everybody is different. But I've, I've had trouble with it now since for about six, seven months. And it's... I don't wish it on anybody because it, between the depression and the anxiety, it's not a good deal. It, it can really make your life miserable. And I've, I've kind of stepped away on the fire end of it to administrative leave type of thing and done, I go do the paperwork, but as far as getting into crashes and being right on the front line, I've backed off that. A personal story which Stork was glad to share with filmmaker Scott Parker as they worked together on the East End feature for a number of months. While getting a first-hand account of the work of the local fire department and the sense of community that ties the residents of East End together. It was pretty powerful. I mean, you know, it's, it's hectic making films, especially around a fire, but I, I knew that people kind of had my back so I could go ahead and shoot in this very dangerous area and that... You know, if I was in an unsafe place, somebody would be yanking me out of it. But to watch this team just jump into action and rush off to these fires and emergencies and just leave everything behind, and also knowing that they don't know what they're going to find when they're there. Like, like Bob said in the film, some of those scenes can be really ugly. And they leave everything behind and they go out and do it over and over and over again. And as the Grasslands Project shines the spotlight on communities like East End, the production also developed a sense of appreciation for the difference between rural and urban centers for visitors like Scott Parker. One thing I really learned is that these small rural communities in the south, they can really teach the big urban centers a lot about what it means to have a community. Because we look at community in urban centers a lot and we try to, we try to make a sense of community in, in the big cities. But down here, there is actually community. Like, people are rooted in community. When something bad happens, people are there to help them. People know their neighbors. You know, the, like the East End Arts Council organized all of this. They just get things done. 
And I think there's a lot of lessons that, that urban Canada can learn from rural Canada. The Grasslands Project will be available online for public viewing as of June the 1st through the National Film Board of Canada. Another exciting season of Market Square returns to downtown Swift Current, featuring live entertainment, fresh garden produce, crafts, and other unique vendors. Market Square, every Saturday at the corner of Central and Chaplin. Proudly presented by the City of Swift Current and Standard Motors, along with Innovation Credit Union and Southwest TV News. Flexible visitation hours are now in place at all Saskatchewan healthcare facilities. We find out more in this report. Saskatchewan continues to lead the way on a number of initiatives. This time as the first Canadian province to take a provincial approach to an open family presence policy in healthcare facilities. This includes more flexible visiting hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all based on the patient's preference. According to the Cypress Health Region, the actual policy was adopted by all health regions in the province on March 31st. But here in the Southwest, we've already been moving towards this model for some time. It's an acknowledgement that family or the people closest to the patient or the resident are actually part of the care team. And so from the Cypress Health Region's perspective, we were happy to pass that policy because I think in practice we were doing that. Uh, quite often, uh, really just looking at the needs of the, the patient or the resident and certainly allowing families that open access. So I think it's more just a commitment that families are not visitors in our facilities, they're actually part of a team. And we know that when families are there with their loved ones and they're looking out for people, their, their loved ones who maybe can't speak for themselves or aren't well enough to speak for themselves, we know that there's a reduction in medication errors, there's better communication that goes back and forth. Discharge planning happens far more effectively. Vashon adds the flexible visiting hours at hospitals and long-term care facilities are all based on the individual patient's requests, with full security measures in place at all health care facilities. As we lock the front doors when our, our admitting staff at the front go home, and then there's only one point of entry into the hospital, and uh, our staff at the emergency window will, you know, push the button and let people go through. So there, there is definitely a checkpoint at the hospital for people that are coming in, you know, after those sort of business hours. The open family presence policy is an internationally recognized best practice, benefiting patients and their families. This is a, a great example of the health uh, region, the Cypress Health region and the Ministry of Health working to put the patient first. Following several months of settling into their new surroundings, a Syrian family has now met their local sponsors in Swift Current. The parishioners of the First United Church in Swift Current got a unique introduction to some of our city's newest residents during a potluck and presentation honoring the Etma family, who are refugees from the Syrian crisis. The Etma family, Anas, Heba, as well as children Shahed and Muhammad, were presented with prayer shells during a gathering following the interfaith service at the church. Reverend Annette Taylor was excited for the opportunity to welcome the family into the First United Church community. As a welcome to the family, uh, we have a ministry at our church called the, uh, the Prayer Shawl Ministry. And so the family are going to be presented with, uh, with shawls to, to welcome them and to hopefully give them comfort in the days to come as they struggle with all the difficulties of moving to a new place and, uh, and dealing with all the changes and the differences in our culture. When we went um, and applied for a refugee family, uh, we didn't, it didn't matter to us whether they were Christian or Muslim or some other faith. For us, it's, it's a matter of caring for our neighbor and being there to help when help is needed. I think I know everybody here because everybody come to visit, Every, everybody want to help. Uh, I like the people here, you know. Very nice people, believe me. <laughs> yes. As well as an introduction to the family, Bashar Syed represented Swift Current's Muslim community 
and gave a presentation to the congregation, educating the attendees about the religion of Islam and clearing up a number of misconceptions. Something both Reverend Taylor and Refugee Sponsorship Working Group Chairperson Amy Popik hoped would create a connection and a sense of brotherhood with the church community. My ideal outcome would be that everyone feels that sense of connection and um, mutual friendship and just gets to know each other better and realize we're all more alike than we are different. My hope is that this congregation will have a deeper understanding of the Muslim faith and how our faith and the Muslim faith are alike in so many ways and how it doesn't really matter what we believe, but what, what matters is how we act and how we treat each other. Overall, it was a great way to meet these new members of the community and to welcome the Etma family into a city that despite the cultural and geographic differences, is a warm and friendly place to start a new life. They first arrived in the winter and it was a little bit uh, overwhelming for them that the weather harsh a little bit for them, uh, did not get used to, uh, but they get more and more overwhelmed by the warmth of the people here in Swift Current. And the most important thing is the sense of community and uh, overwhelming uh, generosity of the people here. So he appreciate this and uh, he's looking forward uh, to work together towards being one, one big family. For Southwest TV News, I'm Craig Chaplin. A decorative sign and a pond are just a few of the distinct features being added to the new Cypress Point subdivision in Swift Current. As the city of Swift Current continues to attract interest in the 80 residential lots now available in the Cypress Point subdivision near the Elmwood Golf Course, a number of upgrades to the area are taking place. This includes the construction of a retaining wall at a cost of $155,000. In order to, to make uh, the subdivision work, particularly for the flow of wastewater, uh, the uh, area had to be excavated. So we ended up with a, about a six to eight foot uh, area there where we need to build a retaining wall. So we're uh, in the process of getting that retaining wall done. So it's one of those things that uh, both functional and, and will add to the, to the beauty of the place. So we've chosen a, a Coda rock wall. So uh, more than just uh, putting up a a concrete uh, wall there. This will be a, a, a landscaped wall that will provide some, some beauty to the place. And Mayor and Council have also approved $240,000 plus taxes for the construction of an entrance feature to the new subdivision. There's a pond uh, with a, uh, with a stone, uh, carved stone sign in it, which will be uh, also function as a bit of a waterfall. Uh, leading into that pond, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a creek and a bridge uh, that goes over that goes over the creek that's supposed to uh, sort of uh, be akin to some other bridges, famous bridges from from golf courses and other places around the world. So uh, there'll also be a little bit of an observation platform in there, so people can actually walk up and and stand on the observation platform and sort of look into the into the lake. All of the landscaping, along with the entrance sign and pond installation, are anticipated to be completed by the fall with the $240,000 in costs covered in the following manner. All of the costs of, of all the landscaping and all the work that we've been doing uh, at Cypress Point to this point, it's all collected into, into one big bundle and, and that is uh, just divided up uh, among the cost of all the lots to recover all the costs of the development from, from the lot sales. More details on the Cypress Point subdivision can be found online through the city's website. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. 
and be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.